Hey everybody, what's up? And it is day three of 31 and 31. And today the movie is Kronos. Now, of course, I couldn't do foreign language flicks without looking at a couple of Guillermo del Toro movies. Yes, there will be two more. One that I love dearly and one that I haven't seen, period. And this one, which I haven't seen in a very long time. Um, so, Kronos. What is Kronos? Kronos is basically, long story short, it's kind of like a weird take on the vampire movie, right? Uh, an elderly man with his granddaughter, he owns like a, a fancy antique shop. And he, you know, somebody comes in very, very crazily, sees a statue. He, you know, the person kind of like, I don't know if they break the statue or not, but, you know, he just like looks at it and then he goes away. And so the old man decides that, you know, and his name is Jesus, um, decides to take a look at it. He finds something inside of it, which is this like scarab, this like golden scarab thing. And that feeds on his blood, but makes him feel younger and more invigorated. Though still in the same body that he is, basically it turns him into a vampire. That's that's kind of the the thing of the movie. And then there's an old man, another old man, um, that has a, a, a nephew that is taking care of him. And he's searching for the same scarab because he's dying. And he wants it so that he can live basically forever, right? And it's like the struggle between the two of them. And over the course of the film, of course, you know, Jesus, he is going and embracing it but he doesn't know what it's going to do to him and so a lot of it is actually kind of that back and forth and him trying to understand what's going on ultimately like he loves what he's getting but is it worthwhile right for everything that's doing um this has really amazing performances in it uh ron perlman is in it uh ron perlman is very good it is primarily spanish but it does have English in it as well, especially Ron Perlman. And it's funny with Ron Perlman, when they were filming the movie, they wanted to have Ron Perlman be fluent, speak fluent Spanish in this movie, but he couldn't. So Guillermo del Toro rewrote the, the role so that he was like an expatriate that was living there. So all his Spanish sounded terrible. And that's how they got away with him, not completely speaking Spanish, but he could understand it. So, like, he'll speak English to somebody, and that person will understand what he's saying and say back to him in Spanish. Uh, it's very good. This movie is absolutely beautifully shot. And for Guillermo del Toro's first movie, like, first movie, his first directorial debut, it, it's pretty amazing, to be honest. It's got some great ideas. It's written by del Toro. Uh, it has beautiful shots. It has great practical effects. I love it when they go inside the little gold thing, the little gold scarab thing. It's really cool what they were able to do. And it's his creature company that actually does the work. And the creature company that he had, it only lasted for about 15 years, but they created some great effects. And it, one of the reasons I love Del Toro so much, and he's one of my favorite directors like of all time, is that he still believes in the practical. He uses some of the, the CGI and, you know, enhancements here or there. But for the most part, most of the stuff he does is just practical. You know, you get Doug Jones in a lot of the roles in his movies to do the creature work. Here, you don't necessarily have that. You have just strong, strong roles from different characters. And yeah, there's somebody passing by that Zach does not like. So I apologize for the barking that may be happening in just a moment. Um, but the, the performances of... All the actors in this movie are great. This is definitely one of the ones where I say the child actor is not quite there, but she doesn't really have anything to do other than look cute and uh, help her grandpa. So, uh, overall, uh, solid movie. You know, four out of five gold scarabs. It's worth your time. It's available on HBO Max. So if you have not seen it, make sure you see it. It's part of the Criterion Collection, and it's it's been called one of the greatest Spanish horror movies of all time. Um, I reserve that for maybe some other films. I think it is one of the better ones that is out there. Uh, it is out of Del Toro's catalog. I would say that I would rank this like third for me personally, right? I've got some other films that I really love. 
the the one that you know we are going to do it i know probably everybody's talked to it at, at nauseum here but that is my absolutely favorite del toro movie and it's what truly made me fall in love with the guy and which you know again we'll talk about it's weird i'm doing two spanish language films back to back but i i just i want to 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 see chronos again and this is the perfect opportunity to do it again you really have to kind of you have to put some a little bit of i don't want to say disbelief but definitely de because of the time frame i mean this was done i think released in 96 95 somewhere around that and uh you know there's still a little bit of that 90s feel to it um but overall strong performances strong cinematography good story and definitely worth your time so thank you guys for watching one of these 31 31s we'll see you tomorrow with you know i don't know maybe another spanish language film definitely not going to go through del toros but there are three there are three that are going to be a part of this list so um but we'll see you then make sure to check out the re most recent podcast that was released on red eye if you haven't seen that already make sure to follow the socials and let me know have you seen chronos what are your thoughts leave me a little bit of comments down below Make sure to like and subscribe if you like the content. All right, I'll catch you guys later on another one of these 31 and 31 mini reviews.